Hello, parents and teachers who may be watching. Welcome to Creating Math Ahas for Parents. I'm Dr. Sandy Atkins, Sandy, and I really appreciate you joining us for this video on fractions on a number line. Now, I hope if you do find these videos useful that you'll consider subscribing to the channel, share them with others who might find them useful, and click on that notification bell so you know when other videos are available. Now, as I said in this video, we're going to be looking at fractions on a number line. There are other videos in this series. This is the fourth in the series on fractions and developing fractions concepts. And we'll move on to other ideas in fractions, but I'll leave a link to the playlist below so that you can see what is also available on fractions for your children. Now, I'm going to start with open number lines. And in these number lines, I'm, I've put up um, four, actually, number line segments, right? We're just looking at a portion of the number line. And I'm going to go ahead and number the endpoints 0 and 1. Now, if you looked at the Creating Fractional Units video, you would have seen that we started with things like um, area models, regions, or I had in the videos, prior videos, um, Play-Doh snake. And we looked at cutting it into two equal parts, four equal parts, eight equal parts, three and six. Now we're going to do a similar idea with the line segments. And remember when we cut the, the Play-Doh snake, we cut it in two equal parts, and instead of moving them directly under and cutting, we just cut each piece in half again. Same idea here. So in the top number line, and we're going to cut into two equal parts. Now, we want to remember that with a number line, it's a, it's a distance model, right? That segment between zero and one half is one half, and then we have another one half piece that takes us to one. And as we move along the number line, we have location points, but we also have this cumulative distance going on. I can cut into four equal pieces and label each of those. Um, let's do six equal pieces. Now, if I were doing this with your children in a classroom, I would stick with continued having the, one, the two, the four, the eight. Then we would do three and six. But in this case, I think you get the idea. So your children are practicing, again, cutting into equal pieces, that distance. And then once we do this, it's important that they do some of this work where they see the number lines, that comparison, and all of those line segments are the same length because we can look at particular locations on that number line. Now, if I look at this location, you see what are all the ways that we labeled that midpoint? Here's where we get at equivalent fractions. I have one half, two fourths, three six, and four eighths. So by setting it up first, by having several number line segments on paper, having them cut them, and then they look at relative positions, again, that's how we can get at equivalency. We could get at three fourths being um, equivalent to six eighths or one fourth to two eighths. It's a way to start to look and build the concept that there are multiple ways to name the same location. That's where our equivalent fractions come in. Now, let's just look at the segment from 0 to 1 that has been cut into four equal pieces. Notice, as I said, it's like a cumulative distance. We don't name each segment 1 fourth. We could. That length is 1 fourth. But as we name locations, I think of it like mile markers, distance markers on a highway. We're at 1 fourth, then 2 1 fourths, 3 1 fourths, 1. So 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths. In other videos, you'll hear me say three one-fourths, remembering that that numerator also tells us the number of unit fraction pieces. So I might use those terms interchangeably. The thing is, is if I keep the pattern going, one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths, then what would we, what's another label for one? Four-fourths. What's another label for zero? zero force. So we can bring in those pieces too and do the equivalence for the whole numbers. Four force is equivalent to one. Zero force equivalent to zero. We could do the same thing with eights, six six, right? Ten tenths. 
building that idea of equivalent fractions, again, for whole numbers as patterns. Now, once we get good at that, your children may be given puzzles like this or problems where they have to identify a particular location. And notice in this case, we're trying to see if they think that's thirds because it's three segments, or if they understand, no, that's still the location for three fourths. And they use benchmarks, right? We cut segments in half, and then we cut in half again. So those are fourths. And that's an important concept that I don't have to cut all of the fourths for it still to be a one fourth. So do you see I've got that midpoint is one half, then halfway between one half and, and one, or it's another name for one half is two fourths, would be three fourths. So you're going to see those types of puzzles. And again, it's using benchmarks. It's using key places on that number line to help us identify locations. And we'll come back to another problem a bit later. Now, the other idea is what happens beyond one. It's that patterning. So I can add a segment to two that's cut into four equal pieces and label each of those. And you notice how I'm using mixed numbers here. So we have the one and one fourth, one and two fourths, one and three fourths, two, and do the same thing from two to three. Now, the other side of it is also labeling number of one fourths we've traveled. Notice once I get to four fourths, I continue the pattern, five fourths, six fourths, seven fourths. So I can label it in terms of number of one fourth segments we've traveled, improper fractions. I can label it in terms of that whole and part, mixed numbers. I could put these two line segments under each other and look at the equivalencies between improper fractions and mixed numbers. Okay, and then again, notice my whole number links, four fourths, eight fourths, 12 fourths. Looking at those are, are other names for one, two, and three, equivalent names. Okay, and again, let's go back to these puzzles. Now notice, it takes your child becoming a bit of a detective, thinking about what they know. So I've got a line segment that goes from zero to three, Right, we've got one and two marked, and then how have the holes been divided? Now, pause the video if you'd like, and you take a shot at what these would be and how you think through it. The important thing with these types of problems, if you're helping your children with them, is have them talk through with you their reasoning process. Have them develop that. So with these problems, it's not about getting to the answer quickly. It's about how they're thinking about it. So again, pause the video, come up with your answers for where the two arrows are located, what they're pointing to, and then come back in a moment. Now, if you've done that and you look at these, I'm curious as to which piece, which arrow you tried first. Did you do the one on the far right or did you do the one between one and two? And, and it's interesting to hear because we want your child to understand there's different ways to approach this problem. So it may be once they tell you one way, remember it's about flexibility to be mathematically proficient. Ask them, is there another way they could have figured this out? Another way, how might a friend have figured this out? See, that's how we get them thinking about how others would reason so they can critique that reasoning and also getting them comfortable with defending their thinking, defending their answer, relaying their process. Okay, all important pieces of mathematical activity. Now, if you look at the segment between two and three, you might notice it was divided into three equal pieces, as was the segment between one and two. Now, what we want to make sure they do with that far right arrow is name that not two thirds, but two and two thirds. It's that location on the number line, that distance that we've traveled, if we're thinking of those mile markers or distance markers on a highway, right? So we've got two and two thirds for the far right. And then notice that the arrow in between one and two is pointed halfway between one and two thirds and two. 
another challenge to think about, well, what happens when we divide each of those segments in half? Well, we end up with six. So that location would be one and five, six. You see the reasoning in these problems. There's much more to it than just naming shaded regions or counting a line segment with all of the hash marks like we did when we started. It's also reasoning through how the segment has been divided, what the endpoints are. Now, on all of my line segments, I had zero as the left-hand endpoint. Nothing says I had to. I could have had this segment go from one to four, right? I could have had it go from 10 to 13. See, we want them to notice the endpoints and notice they have a segment of the number line and then reason through what fractions are represented. Now, one game that I tend to play a lot with children is a concentration game. And this concentration game, you may play some of these games with your children um, at home. I'll leave a link to the, uh, to the website that will have some of these activities available for you as PDFs that you could look at and use. So I'll put that link in for you. But essentially, when you play this with your children or when you play concentration, just one variation will make a huge difference. They turn over the two cards. They put them in the exact location. That will help them remember where they are and help you remember if you're playing with them. But if you notice these two cards, okay, the key is some, some children will grab those cards and take them right away and you haven't gotten a good look at them. And there's no defense of answers going on when they do that. So here's what we want to do. If they think it's a match, they must defend how they know, why they think it's a match before they take the cards. If they think it's not a match, they must defend why it's not a match before they turn them over. See, that ongoing defense really helps solidify their thinking and helps us also see if there's some misunderstandings or them connect that. Now, if you look at this, the card on the right, our, our number line that's represented on the right, it looks like it's divided into four equal pieces. Like if I look at that midpoint and then I cut that in half. So if I think of that midpoint location as halfway, yep, and then I cut that in half one fourth and I might grab that quickly, but notice the endpoints. This is from zero to two. So that midpoint is not labeled one half. That midpoint is one. So halfway between zero and one, is one half. So these are not a match. I would turn them back over and put them in the same location. Let's look at a different one. If I look at these two, okay, so I've got, let's see here, I've got two and one fourth, and then I have those improper fraction labels. Okay, so notice what's another name for six thirds? What's another name for nine thirds? Are these going to be um, equivalent, right? Is that place two and one fourth? Well, if I understand that six thirds is the same as two, and I've cut that segment between two and nine thirds the same as three into four equal segments, so that would be a match, two and one fourth but all the reasoning. And notice how we're trying to get them very comfortable with different representations for fractions as they go through this. So as we look through, um, I hope that helped, but thinking about how to have them first cut line segments and number lines into those equal number of pieces, labeling them, labeling them in multiple ways to look at equivalent fractions by same location on the number line, looking at them labeled as mixed numbers as well as improper fractions, and then mixing and matching when we're playing games like this concentration game that I shared with you. And there's lots of ones. And if you think, well, I don't have a lot, or it's something your children could make, 
right? As they're getting comfortable with these, let them make the game. You can cut index cards in half and let those be the cards for the concentration game. And as you notice, I tend to always use 24 cards for concentration. So they have the pairs, the matches, and then your children can make them more complex and see if they can um, challenge you in your thinking or siblings. So again, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please consider sharing. Please give it a thumbs up. Again, if you would subscribe to the channel, it really does help the channel out, helps us grow a bit more. Um, and click on that notifications bell when you'll, so you'll know when other videos become available. Thanks so much for watching.